Happy New Year. Um, and happy belated holiday season. I got a new phone for Christmas. And it is an iPhone 7, which I upgraded to from a 5C. So I have um, tons of new upgrades. But um, <laughs> the biggest one is that I have so much more storage than I did before. And it's so freeing. I didn't realize how much I was missing a meal. Um, so what that means for you is that my videos don't have to be between three and four minutes anymore. Um, so today I thought I would read you something that I wrote. Um, I recently started a blog and writing isn't the um, only component or even the biggest component of it by any means um, but it is a part of it so I was looking for writing pieces that I could upload and I stumbled across this one that I really liked so since I owed you guys a video and since I have the space to make a longer video now I thought that it would be kind of fun to read it out loud and also um, helpful for me too because reading it out loud kind of helps me make sure that it all makes sense and sounds um, like it flows and things like that so I wrote it a long time ago but you know it's always good to keep yourself sharp so this is an original short story by me and it's called Three Synapses And here we go. I recently learned that only three synapses separate the olfactory bulb from the hippocampus. Essentially, this means that your sense of smell is the one most closely connected to your memories. It's the only sense that's processed emotionally first, allegedly. I suppose I can see how this would be true. I just wish that my most powerful emotional responses were triggered by something other than smell. For me, I'd imagine it would be the act of getting into a Ford Focus, especially the messy ones with pizza boxes and empty Gatorade bottles that crunch under my feet on the passenger side. Especially, especially ones with drivers who don't break until I'm mid heart attack. And shouldn't the sight of your old house be a powerful visual trigger, particularly when paired with the somatosensory trigger of a cold, icy night like the one when I slipped on the way over? After falling once, I wouldn't climb the rickety metal fire escape to your bedroom drunk, so I rang the doorbell and stood before you with blood running down my right shin, soaking my torn black tights. Is it also somatosensory if I feel like I melted when you broke out your cute-ass smile to laugh at me? I must admit, I did think of you the next time someone called me a dime. You had said that's what I looked like, even as I propped my leg up on your toilet seat in a skirt to clean the dirty snow and cobblestone crumbles from my wound. I think that auditory prompt was so strong because I expected to feel fulfilled by that stranger, and yet I was quite empty. I suppose I was hypersensitized to your terribly infrequent compliments, so much so that when I got one I was high on it all day. <laughs> to know that you thought I was pretty was worth more than hearing it from ten strangers. The taste of hard cider should be a gustatory trigger because you turn me on to it. Yet, I don't really think of you when I drink it most weekends. Unless. Unless that Jason Derulo song about the trumpets also comes on because of that night you brought me to your friend's apartment above Hookah Matata. It came on while we were playing beer pong and your arm was around my waist in public because you were drunk, so I was feeling especially yours. I happened to look up at you 
when you happen to look particularly beautiful and the image is permanently etched. Okay, so it's clear I think of you often, but for as much as I'm triggered by things that are checked in by other sensory systems, I will admit that there is a smell that really gets me. Oddly enough, it's not your hair gel or a cologne. I'm talking about the smell of Maine Hall. Maine, of course, is the eyesore of campus. Our school has buildings made of gorgeous serpentine and limestone, ones that are dubbed national landmarks, and then this 1970s concrete monstrosity that has the waxed floor smell of a middle school gym. On its own, that smell is enough to evoke an emotion or two, but when paired with you, I'm reminded of the first time I saw you in the fall of sophomore year. I was so glad that I had forgotten to schedule Italian the semester before because that work of fate landed me in class with you. I always hoped Professor Essa would group us together for assignments, but I only got that lucky one time and I was so nervous that I couldn't think of one single thing to say to you. The next semester, you missed a bunch of classes, and I remember worrying about you before I even knew you. That turned out to be when your friend passed away. And even though I didn't learn that for another half a year, I wished I could express my concern for you via osmosis or weird stranger-to-stranger -stranger eye contact when you finally came back to class. And fall of junior year, when we finally did get together, you told me you liked the way I dressed. After that, I always ran to Maine from my class all the way in Brandywine, so I had enough time to stop in the bathroom and check myself out. I took my coat off to assure you got a good look in my outfit, I tussled my hair just right, and then I hung out until I could catch my breath. But after all that effort, when I finally walked into the classroom, I never even looked to see if you noticed me. I always looked up at the clock. I didn't want you to know that I cared about your reaction to me, but I did. And I should have looked, because watching your face as I came in the door might have clued me into what I would deal with for the next two years. I'm sure you didn't turn your head toward me. I could have known as early as then. I don't know why the olfactory bulb nestled itself in with the sentimental parts of the brain like it did. I don't know what it means cosmically that it's the only sense to get processed emotionally or even if that's completely true. But I do know that I have tried to train all five of my senses to forget you or even hate you and they won't. So I'll sit and I'll wait for the day when your face isn't burned into my brain like a brand anymore, as easy to remember as how to breathe or lift a glass to my lips, and I pray that I won't miss it when it's gone. That's it. That's my little writing piece. Um, I hope you like it, and I'll link to my blog in the description, but um, don't feel obligated to follow it. I'm just in a phase where I have to, you know, try to get as many followers as possible. So I'm opening up this channel for that, but don't feel obligated. I appreciate it very much if you do decide to follow it, but it's okay if you don't. I won't be insulted or anything. Okay, I have the hiccups. <laughs> Alright, um, well... Again, Happy New Year. Um, it's really nice to talk to you again, and I can't wait to talk to you more in the comments. Um, I'm also sorry if you could hear my sister singing in the shower. <laughs> um, hopefully it was far enough in the background that you won't be able to hear it, but just in case you can.
for me. Okay, so sweet dreams and I'll talk.